Yes, guys, welcome back to another video. It is Chelsea versus Manchester United at Old Trafford. Before we start this video, as usual, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like button and press the subscribe button as well. Also, hit that bell notification to be the first guy to know whether we release any new content. And yeah, it's Chelsea versus Man United. You already know how to get the big man flex on. It's that way, right? Yeah, it is perfect. Yeah. Bro, what are you saying, man? How are you been? Yeah, you got to get used man. to it, isn't it? Uh, I'm good. Listen, we've had a, uh, a weird start to the season. Well, crap start to the season. I'm not going to dress it up. Um, but the last couple of games, PSG and Newcastle, we start to find our feet a little bit, make some changes to the starting eleven, and get a little bit of confidence. So, um, yeah, although the PSG game obviously isn't in the Premier League, but I, I feel like that hopefully will be a little bit of a catalyst into the game against you. And we've always got a decent record against you under Solskjaer. So... Yeah, interesting. Want to revenge that semi-final, uh, the, the, yeah, semi-final defeat. Yeah, last time we played, the only time we can actually talk about beating Ole. I don't know what's been with us recently. Ole loves a game against Chelsea and I already know you lo you're going to have a little bit of United bias about it, but how initially, how confident do you feel going into this game? Just early thoughts. Uh, if you'd have asked me two games ago, dreading it. Like literally going into Newcastle and in the PSG game, we were like, I think Oli's job could be on the line here. Like, we got battered by Spurs, should have lost against Brighton, but luckily won, and got battered by Palace on the first day of the season. It really had been horrendous. Um, and Oli had a lot to do, but he steadied the ship against Newcastle with a really good performance, an even better performance, dominant performance against PSG. But he made big changes to the squad. Pogba on the bench, um, changed the shape, Fred coming in. So, d different Mason Greenwood out. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of... Because I'm still on a bit of a buzz from PSG, which could be my downfall, I know, but I, I've got a little bit more confidence than I would. And then on top of that, like you said, Oli's record against Chelsea is pretty good. I just don't know how he's going to set up because I know he's got a lot of faith in that that 5-3-2 um, that works so well against you guys. But I don't know, I would kind of like to see him. I've seen you guys' defensive priorities as well and you're not there yet. You're, not, you're still not in your groove and I want to see us put you under as much pressure as possible. And that might be in a 3-5-2 because Solskjaer believes it is, but... I don't know. I want, us, I want us to get to a point where we can go to these big games and go 4-3-3. Three, three. Here's our attackers. But we need to keep our balance. And I think he just probably will go with the 5-3-2 three, again. Here's the thing, because you said a very interesting point about how two, if you talked to me about this game two games ago, you'd be thinking something completely different. Yeah. And I think it's been a complete 180 with Chelsea fans. Because if you spoke to me about this game two games ago, I'd be like, <laughs> nice, <laughs> payback. But since then, we've had the Southampton game where we just managed to throw away two points again. We had the Sevilla match, which, I mean, yeah, clean sheet. I mean, we barely see any of those nowadays. But same way, it didn't really look too inspiring. And with you lot, it's been completely different. You've had two good performances that have been able to turn the favours around around in your fan base. Um, would you say it's been two good results or would you say it's been something a lot deeper and like Ole's actually steering the ship around? I, 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 with, with all the re reactions I've done to those two games, Lewis, like he deserved credit in both games, in both games, especially the PSG one. But uh, it's definitely Oli steering the ship. The pressure was on after that. After that six-one battering of Spurs, we went off for two weeks, obviously an international break. And a lot of Man United fans said it, including me. Like he's got to make some changes in that squad. We have our thing, the A team, right? Martial, Rashford, Greenwood, Bruno, Pogba. Like get them all out, almost like a FIFA thing. Their stats mm. are high. Play everyone. The balance is just off. Whenever Bruno plays with Pogba in the midfield, there's gaps all over it. It's a mess. Mason Greenwood out on the wide areas. His positioning is a little bit off. Martial's taken a while to get going. Rashford was inconsistent in them first three games. To be fair, he scored a brilliant goal against Brighton, to be fair to him. Um, so it was actually Solskjaer who steadied the ship against Newcastle. Dropped, um, dropped Matic, dropped Pogba, dropped Greenwood. Martial was already out. So there's four changes right there. And he made us more difficult to beat. He did start Dan James on the left, who picked up good positions, but was wasteful. But we played a lot better. One matter had an absolute superb game. Him and Bruno were linking up. You had uh, McTominay and Fred just battling, keeping the ball well, making us more difficult to play against. So to answer your question, it isn't just two good results. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's more than that because Solskjaer, you know, a lot of Man United fans who don't want Solskjaer to, to be the manager and want him out, say he's got no tactics, say he's got he's clueless and he's just a little PE teacher and all this crap. But really, he showed in the last two games anyway, that's all I can go off, that he can make some big decisions. So, yeah, um, 
I'm, I'm, I think it's a little bit more than just two good results. Okay, um, maybe we'll, we'll talk away from the two results then. In a long term sense, do you still have a bit more faith and optimism in Ole now? Because it's been very here or there over the last season or so. I'm not expecting you to like jump in between in and out. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you're already stuck in what you're thinking. But do you see any changes? Do you see anything optimistic to build on with Ole, or do you think this isn't another just a case of form or something like uh, that? It's difficult to answer that because yeah, with Ole historically, it, we play in bounces. I've said this a lot. We bounce FC like we will we'll start really well, then we then we then we dip. Then Bruno came in, then we raised again. Then after lockdown, we did all right. Then we dipped, finished, stumbled over the line, carried that on for this season. And now it looks like actually he's getting a little bit of confidence. Um, I just think Solskjaer deserves, I've said this many times and I'll stick to it. Solskjaer deserves a chance to see what he can do this season in a in a, in a a transfer window where he didn't get what he wanted. He he had an awful transfer window. Sancho 2020 Mondays. <laughs> I mean, I can't even tell you not to talk about because this is your channel now. But the S word is I'm very. I'm just gonna drop that one and, that, and leave it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, let's 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 say it as it is. Like Chelsea fans and all fans will know the Jaden Sancho saga and what that brought. He didn't come. We needed a player in that position. We needed another centre half. Didn't get it. We got Cavani, who hasn't kicked the ball yet. Um, in the last day of the transfer window, panic buy. We were trying to get Usman Dembele. Panic buy. We signed two youngsters, one in Pelestri, who's just made the match day squad against PSG but won't be playing anywhere near now and one in Ahmad Traore um, who won't even be here till January and again is a very young player so he has he, you know he finished third and upheld his held at the end of the bargain really do you know what I mean he got us into the top four yeah it might have been on the same points as he got last season which shows the league was worse but we were 14 points off you legitly 14 points and I know what was really frustrating last year is we kept catching you up and then we needed that one game that actually took us above you and then would flop. Um, but after lockdown, I think our form was good up until for about three or four games and then it dipped again and then we ended up stumbling over and I think you got a draw against someone as well. So, um, yeah, he, he upheld his... points is just cap attack, so I do want to drop that. Yeah. Right Listen, for whatever reason it is, do you know what I mean? Lampard couldn't couldn't plug the, plug the sink. So, um, yeah, I, to answer your question, I... I, I, got, I believe in him, but I think it'll be difficult because if results don't go his way and, you know, he, he hasn't had the transfer window he wants or got the players he wants or he gets a few injuries, it could be back to square one again for him. OK, um, we'll move away from Manchester United then. Looking at the game now and looking at actual, your actual opposition, what are your thoughts on facing Chelsea? Are you optimistic? Are you a bit worried because li literally I'm not going in there saying I'm gassed about I think we're going to beat you guys I think it's a case of whichever attack shows up more because both our defences are looking hella suspect right now are you worried are you optimistic based on form and just the way both teams are going looking into the match I'd say optimistic because you've got reason to think you can win um, we've been awful at Old Trafford in the, in the games we've played there against Palace and Spurs shocking conceded nine goals in two games at Old Trafford. Awful, do you know what I mean? So on that note, yeah, you've got every reason to think, ah, they're not quite there yet. They're, they're teething problems and let's go for them. But I'll fire that straight back at Chelsea. I've been watching and with the expectancy, I almost said at the beginning of the season, with Lampard spending that much money, there's almost more pressure on him than Oli because Oli didn't spend that much money. He didn't have a, that transfer winner. And I know it's because you had the money sitting there because of the ban. It's a different situation, but I'm just saying, He's got Kai Havertz, fantastic young player. He's got Timo Werner, he's got Ziyech, he's got Chilwell, he's got a new keeper. It's five players there. He's got, um, what's his name on a free? Um, Thiago Silva. Mm -hmm. That's six. And that's starters. Do you know what I mean? That's not That's not like, oh, a young player, see how he's going to go and how he gets on. That's, that's saying, see you later, Barkley. Callum Hudson-Odoi, get on the bench. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, see you later. That's Lampard saying, right, I'm building my thing now. Um, and obviously you've got a lot of players to embed like I think the first couple of games didn't look quite at it I think the game against yeah. Brighton was you wasn't at your best well, you, you got over the line um, the first game you played who was that against? Uh, Brighton oh that was Brighton the second game you played uh, Liverpool which was great until the red card and then Kepa Tax came into effect Kepa Tax came into effect the Southampton game I look at that shows you everything you need to know about Chelsea with the inconsistencies and at the back you know, 2 nil up, cruising, and then you end up in that position. And then you get 3-2, turn it straight on. It's almost like FIFA. They got to 2-2 and you think, all right, cool, let's get our heads back in it. 
great interchange. Well done to Werner. Great tap in from um, from Havertz. Great positioning. Like you showed what you can do. But then again, defensive throw is down the other side. Can see it out. So, um, and the goal that um, Chad Evans scored. Ch um, not Chad Evans, sorry. Um, the Shea, second one. Shea Evans. Right. Um, Jesus Christ. Calamity. Like, first of all, Zuma, what are you doing? Then Kepa, what shocking. Bro, Kepa managed to do something mad and take the blame away from Kurt Zuma. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I was looking at that. How the hell do you slide tackle a ball that isn't a back pass? Like, just put a hand onto it. But this is what I mean by Kepa tax is serious. You <laughs> genuinely, you're caught up because of Kepa. It's genuinely 10, 12 points lost a season. Yeah. Which yeah. is why hope and God Mendy starts. And is I he don't fit, did he play against Seville? Yeah, he did. And he kept a clean sheet. Oh, so surely he's going to play. He's nowhere no near Thank going to be. God. Yeah, yeah. you got a check back in the squad. So there's no way Kepa's going to play. Yeah, and you know what? Right now he's our second string goalkeeper the way things are moving. Because Willy, I even said Willy was suspect. We played him in the semi-final against you guys, but I've always thought he's a bit sus. Decent mm -hmm. shot stopper and that's it. Yeah, but but that's been the up. biggest problem for us is that it's our goalkeeper. And if anything, that's half the reason why the defence looks shook. Because if you're protecting someone who you know as soon as you're letting through is going to concede, that's always going to be in the back of your head. Yeah, exactly. I, I, definitely the Kepa situation is a is a must. He, he's got to go and Lampard made it clear from early. Unlucky to go and get his keeper and then he gets injured. But then at least, you know, from your sake, he came back in, got a, got a clean sheet, although he didn't win the game, got a clean sheet. Um, and he's got you know, he's got a start. So, But I just think um, Solskjaer will relish the chance. I think it's a good game for us to have in this moment. We were really worried about this. You know, we got a tough run of fixtures and PSG was the first real one of that. We won that pretty convincingly, in my opinion. Um, if we can beat you, our confidence really will be sky high. Um, so you're playing us at a time where we're just starting to wake up, Lewis. I'm not going to lie. We're starting to get a little bit of a, right, guys, we're, we're fitter now. We go again. Because remember, we started a week behind everyone else as well. That, that mm -hmm. didn't help us. So yeah. now you're starting to see a fitter Manchester United, um, a sharper Manchester United, and hopefully um, a more clinical Manchester United, obviously. I'd be interested to see what he does up front, though, because Cavani's fit now. Um, didn't travel to Paris, not quite there yet. He stayed and trained. So he's got a few more days in the tank. There's no Martial. Greenwood's been out of favour. Oli said it's, it's a niggle, but it's not. It's disciplinary reasons for me. He's, you know, there's been reports that he's you know reminding them of his responsibilities and stuff. And you get that with young players, but Greenwood's yeah. been out Marcus Rashford, he'll be sky-high rocket of confidence after the PSG game. I know you can't keep living off it, but we know what confidence does to teams and players individually. Marcus Rashford will be confident. So... And Bruno is Bruno, so yeah, we will we 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 will see, man. But I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, um, we'll just wrap it off with a little score prediction. No, you don't need to go too far out there. But what are your thoughts on the game? How do you think it's gonna go? Uh I think it'll be a three-one United win. Three-one. Okay. Three yeah, I think cool. I don't know. I just think we'll finally turn it on. We've got to at some stage. Two awful performances at Old Trafford so far against Palace and against um, Spurs. Absolutely battered by Spurs. Capitulation. Surely, I know there's no fans, but they've got to be getting some home pride now and put in a proper performance. And I think if they do, I think we can put you to the sword. So, yeah, I'm going 3-1. Okay, I can't lie. I'm going to completely mirror the scoreline. I'm going to go 3-1 same way as well. I think both of us know there ain't going to be any clean sheets in this match. It's just going to be whatever attack turns up more. Someone's getting burned in this match, regardless. I don't know what team it's going to be, but someone's going to get burned and have their career ended. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the points that we've made. Don't forget, check out Flex. I'm sure you guys already know United Stand, but if you guys haven't already, check out check them out. We're going to leave a link down in the description below as well. Any other final thoughts before we wrap this up? No, I'm not going to say good luck. I'm just going to say beware. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's fair. I couldn't say good luck either. I'd be lying to you as well. But yeah, guys, like and subscribe, Flex. Thanks for coming on as per usual. And we'll see you guys on Saturday where hopefully Chelsea get the W. Up the Chelsea.